What's up guys, jiving back with another video. Today's video is what I learned from Noah Riley. This man's is nuts. He has a really unique form of peace control and an awesome set of moves that I'm gonna be breaking down in this video. Please consider hitting that like button, subscribing if you're new, and using code JiveNTV in the item shop. Let's get into this video. So first off in this video, I wanna break down his moves. One thing that he does insanely well is pre-fire like crazy. He goes for pre-fires almost every single fight. Anytime somebody's on his wall, he goes for it. His timing with his pre-fires is insane. I know me, for example, when I'm going for a pre-fire, a lot of times I'll do it too early because people nowadays, they fake out a wall pickaxe. That way they make you pre-fire and miss it. But Noah Riley reads when they're about to fake pickaxe a wall. He's super patient with it and waits until it's like almost a sure thing that they're gonna be hitting the wall and then goes for the pre-fire. And a lot of times this gives him like 100 to 150 damage health advantage in the fight. After watching him, I'm definitely gonna be practicing being more patient with my pre-fires because that can give you a major advantage. Another thing he does all the time is this edit out the side and then editing the ramp move that I'm showing on screen here. This is a really effective way to handle it if somebody's underneath your ramp and you own a sidewall. Basically, you edit the ramp to expose them when you're going out the side, and then you have this right-hand peak with the wall right as you go out there. One thing that you need to note is that you don't want to edit the ramp too early, you know, hold it until you're outside of the box and you're behind the right-hand peak. It can all be kind of one fast motion, but you don't want to edit the ramp while you're still in the box, obviously, because that might mess up your movement. But this move works so well. I tried it out yesterday in Arena and smacked somebody in the forehead. Absolutely destroyed him. Another thing he does really similar to that is when he's editing a ramp, like say he's in a box with a ramp like here, and there's an opponent below the ramp, he waits until he's in the perfect position to edit that ramp. As you can see, he's backing out the side while he's holding this ramp edit, and he doesn't want to confirm it too soon. He wants to be out of the box before he confirms it. That way, he has room to move and isn't stuck in a 50-50 in the box. He also makes really good use of this low wall edit here. It's where you edit the top three squares to get this edit, and he does this a lot. He just ducks beneath the edit if he's going for a peak shot, but he can also piece control really easily from behind this edit. And after watching him use this edit, I started wondering why I don't use it as much, you know? Because that edit opens up the entire top, you can piece control to the left, right, above, and if you jump, below. It has so much room to move and a lot of potential. And all you have to do to take a peek shot with it is duck beneath it. So I'm definitely going to start utilizing that edit more. Another pressure move that he does all the time is if he sees somebody with no cone in their box, He'll place a cone in their box by aiming his crosshair below their box, and then the cone just goes in. Even though they're fully boxed, if you aim below the box, the cone will just slide right in there. And if you've ever had this happen to you, it's very, very awkward. So when he does this, the opponent's like, wait a minute, there's a cone in my box all of a sudden, and they kind of start to panic. They feel like they need to run. And so this sometimes forces them out a certain side, and you're able to pre-box them out that side. I saw Noah Riley place the cone in their box and then just go for the ramp psycho into their box while they're still kind of knocked off guard by that cone. If you get in fast enough, they might just be panicking and you can get some free shots. But he utilizes that cone placement all the time and it's really useful, especially if you're aggroing somebody. And now the last trick that went viral a few months ago because of Noah Riley is placing ramps and walls straight through walls like he can just crouch up and down in front of a wall and place a wall or a ramp into somebody's box so if he sees a wall not placed in somebody's box he'll crouch up and down up against the wall and try to take that wall just like there and he'll do the same thing with ramps and now this brings me into the concept of peace control that i kind of learned while watching noah riley and i feel like this is going to open a door for a lot of you guys to start inventing a new play style so let's talk about it. The idea is trying to manipulate your opponent's mind throughout a fight to go out certain directions and peace control them that direction. So for example, if Noah Riley goes up to somebody's box and does that phase trick to get a ramp in their box, the opponent is immediately gonna go out of side. They wanna get out of that box cause they're like, how the heck did he get that ramp in there? I need to reposition. So by placing the ramp in a box, you force them out of side and you can peace control them out that side. Basically, Noah Riley is a mind controller. He'll walk up to a box and say, I'm going to manipulate your mind to go out this side so that I can pre-box you and get a free kill. 
And so that might seem a little bit crazy, but when you're trying to pre-box somebody, basically you're predicting which way they're going and you're trying to get a box out that side so that they walk right into it. But if you can master a playstyle like Noah Riley, where you get stuff in their box and forces them out of side, that can give you even more opportunities to peace control somebody. Noah Riley creates a lot of his peace control opportunities just by manipulating their minds. If you watch his gameplay, you'll probably see a lot of that. Pretty much anytime I get something into somebody's box, they try to rebox out a different side, and I just try to track their movement. So by using that phase method where he phases a ramp in somebody's box immediately and forces them out of side right at the start of the fight, he can end fights way faster. So if you can get that strategy down, it'll help your W keying a ton. I'll try to start building a playstyle around this so that I can really break it down for you guys, but start toying with the idea yourselves. Maybe go into creative with a friend and start practicing this phase trick where you phase ramps and walls through their box. That way you can start experimenting with it. But yeah, I'll try to have a playstyle like that coming out soon. There's two other things I want to explain about Noah Riley's playstyle. First thing, if you've ever watched him play in arena, you know that his mechanics literally look like he's fighting somebody in creative. I watched him play creative and I watched him play arena and his gameplay almost looks identical. This brings me back to the confidence trick that I talked about a long, long time ago, where you build your confidence in creative, and then when you're in arena, focus on every fight as if it's a creative fight. It's still one of the things that's helped me get to where I am today in arena. I used to be a creative warrior doing wagers all the time in creative, learning free builds, and just grinding out my mechanics in creative like crazy, which is how you build the fundamentals of the game. And then once you've mastered that in creative, like you can win most of your creative fights, you can nail edit courses with no problem. You should try to get in that same mind space that you have in creative while you're playing arena. This is pretty much the biggest confidence trick that I've learned for arena. Whenever you're in a fight, you feel overwhelmed, just focus up, pretend you're fighting some crackhead in creative and get in that same mind space and you'll start fighting a lot more confidently. And then with time, your mechanics will start to look the same in arena as creative. Noah Riley definitely feels the same confidence in creative in arena because you can tell by his gameplay. He starts out every single fight by running an entire edit course on somebody. Before there's even damage dealt, he'll just crank like three triple edits at his opponent. And doing stuff like that can intimidate your opponent, help you hit nasty clips, and get more comfortable with the ping difference of creative in arena. Just practicing doing edit courses, all that stuff while you're in game. Eventually it'll become natural for you. And the last thing I want to talk about is his patience. For the most part, he'll just be cranking edits on his opponent like crazy trying to get them pre-boxed, but there will be times in his fights where he's just kind of sitting still waiting to read his opponent, and as soon as he sees a peace control opportunity, he edits at the speed of light and tries to get it as fast as possible. You need to make sure that you're taking time in your fights to read your opponent, and then once you see an opportunity, don't hesitate. Do it at full speed. Try to peace control them as fast as possible so that you don't miss that opportunity. But if you ever feel lost in a fight and you don't really have direction with your peace control, you need to take a second or two, try to analyze what your opponent's doing, and then strike at the speed of light. That way you can get them peace controlled fast and you know you're not completely lost in the fight. Hopefully this video helped you out. I'm going to be practicing a lot of these techniques that I talked about in this video over the next few days in Solo Arena on my stream. And hopefully I'll have a video out in the next few days called I Tried to Play Arena Like Noah Riley. Hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.